little bit on the collective. Even a good 65 on the descent. This looks pretty good. And then we'll start a little flare and flare into it. Now we're float, 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 float. Down with the skids. Up with the collective. We're on the, on the ground. Gotta wait for it to quit slide. All right, I'll we'll roll my throttle back up. Yeah, proud of traffic, helicopter 90669 is on the go, out the taxiway. We'll be setting up left-hand pattern uh, back into the uh, Cape Copter ramp. Cape Girl traffic. As you can see, the little R22, it's not all that much more difficult to do a full down auto than the uh, 44 is. One of the differences in the uh, R22 is the skids are shorter, and so it's a little smoother on the set down in the R44. The R22's got kind of short skids, and if you don't land perfectly level on the skids, you touch down on the back of it, it gets to rocking just a little bit. It's kind of what you don't want to do. Landing line here. And Cape Girl traffic, experiment, or helicopter 90669, about a half mile final for the Cape Copters ramp on the north end of the field, Cape Girl traffic. So we're coming around, pretty much right into the wind. Wind's out of 310. My entry into the ramp here is right at 310, so that works out pretty good. what my son calls the Dookie 6 approach. That little pond down there you see used to be a, 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 a sewer or a cesspool pond, whatever. And uh, so if you come up short on this approach, you end up six foot deep in, in Dookie. So this is the Dookie 6 approach coming in. Or the Dookie 6 transition, I guess you could say. Coming into the ramp here, we're right downwind from a whole bunch of hangars. So you get a lot of turbulence induced by those hangars, so that kind of coming in here is kind of a little bit turbulent. Not too bad today. See if I can sit it down right about here. We're on the ramp. All the way down with the collective. I'm going to roll the throttle down and hold it. RPMs get less than 80. I can come off with my governor. Let my arm uh, my, uh, reach back here. Friction the uh, collective. And we'll friction the cyclic. Looking at my timer. Going to do a two-minute cool now. We're starting on the dime. Light, my nav light, save a little battery. Got one more minute to go. At a minute and a half, we disengage the clutch. Two minutes, mixture, mags, alternator. Have you guys thought any more about the uh, the difference in the uh, gyro versus the helicopter when you're uh, coming in for a landing at 65 and why a gyro will actually touch down at a much small or much uh, slower forward airspeed than a helicopter will? I'll give you a hint, and you can think about it a lot more. It has to do with rotor RPM. Rotor RPM. So what's the big difference in rotor RPM with a helicopter and a gyro plane? So think, think about that. You should be able to figure out the answer. I'll tell you more specifically in our auto rotations uh, uh, lectures that we're going to do here. So right at, and a half, disengage our 
clutch. 30 seconds later, we're going to pull mixture mags off later. About 10 seconds to go. Make sure wait for it to kill the engine and all for the magnetos, all for the alternator switch. And again, as the blades spool down, they start getting even slower. I would eventually start coming slightly to the right. So my nose is into the wind here. So <clears throat> as the blades slow down, I'm going to start coming just slightly to the right with the stick. And again, flying a gyroplane taught me that. When you bring the stick slightly to the right like that, you're actually reducing the dissymmetry between the two blades, and they'll tend not to want to... You'll notice that the, the uh, mass doesn't buff it around nearly as much as if you just left it centered up. So I'm coming slightly to the right as the blades are slowing down. And then I'm going to get on my brake, get them slowed down. Winds are blowing pretty briskly. Once the blades start to get slow, and the definition of how slow is slow, well, when you can tell the end of the blades are yellow, you start being able to make out that the end of the blades are yellow, you just need to get on the rotor brake and get it stopped. Don't really care so much about lining it up with the axis of the aircraft. You're just wanting to get the thing stopped before the blades get to rocking too bad and flap down and actually hit the tailbone. So, I'm on my rotor brake pretty good. All right, got the blade stop. 